What's up, everybody? It's your boy Chip. We're back at you with another edition of Ask a Vapor. And we are live tonight for your educational purposes. This is a Q&A that we do live on our YouTube channel the second Tuesday of every month. And it happens to be February 12th, which is the second Tuesday. Thank you guys for tuning in. We certainly appreciate it. Um, so let's get to the getting. Um, I hope you liked the... Uh, the elevator music, it was not my first choice, but, um, you know, I was running out of time, so I just picked something and ran with it. Um, that being said, <coughs> first thing we do every single month is our advocacy update. So, um, for a lot of you, it's brand new legislative season, so there's a lot of action going on. Uh, tons of flavor ban bills that are being put forth. Uh, I saw a lot of uh, wholesale taxing that was go that was proposed, and there's also the FDA's two cents, which we will get to in a little bit. Um, what's up, David? Glad you're tuning in, brother. Um, as always, this is an educational show, so make sure if you have any questions, type them in the little chat box. I'm trying to watch that as we're doing this, so. Um, I've learned after a year of doing this how to kind of organize what I got going on. So hopefully we can have a good show tonight and keep keep you guys as informed as possible. Um, let's jump right into the advocacy update portion. Um, here we go. So a couple of interesting things going on. Uh, obviously the FDA put their two cents in a couple of months ago. And they just put out another statement today or yesterday I think it was. Um, basically saying that um, they, out of their entire um, sting operation that they did over the three months in, I want to say, late summer or early winter of last year, um, they sent a bunch of people out to try to buy e-cigarettes um, from different stores. Um, some of them were vape shops. Majority of them, I think, were what they call C stores or convenience stores. <laughs> Excuse me. That's like your 7-Elevens, your Quickie Marts, that type of thing. Um, they took a step further this week, and they actually sent letters to Walgreens and Circle K stores. Um, because those particular stores, specific locations, were um, deemed as being the biggest failures, as far as they're concerned, with uh, underage sales. So... Um, we did get a, a small win this this time with the uh, as far as the FDA is concerned, and that's primarily because they said vape shops were doing a good job, which is something that we all knew. But um, to sort of hear it from them was cool. Uh, but they're not uh, holding up on this at all. You know, there's a lot of T twenty one bills, which is raising the legal age to buy tobacco products across the board to the twenty one years old. Uh, we've already seen that in a couple states. I think California and another one somewhere out there. Um, our state, Virginia, is in the process of pushing a bill through that, that is T21 or Tobacco 21 as well. So they're raising the age of uh, to purchase tobacco products in this state, which honestly, I've got kind of two feelings about it. The first one is that it's not really that big a deal. We're, you know, adult products that we sell to adults. So it's not really gonna affect me personally as a, a vapor, um, but as a you know vape advocate, I am a little bit worried that the government is stepping in and basically saying that we think um, we need to change the legal age of consent, but only for tobacco products. Um, you know, obviously the first thing that gets brought up is, well, what about the military? You know, we, we love our military here. We support our military. I waited on a couple guys that, that looked like they were just recruited out of high school today. And they, um, you know, were 18, 19 years old and they can go and die for the freedom of this country. But, you know, they can't have a beer and they can't uh, apparently buy tobacco products in the state of Virginia um, by the end of this year. So, um not really cool. I don't really feel like that's personally, in my personal opinion, I don't really feel like that's something that we need to be doing. 
But, um, you know, their argument is that, well, we got to do something about the kids. You know, the kids are getting these, you know, and selling them to their friends in high school and stuff like that. And, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think that's really going to change one way or the other with this T21 bill. But it gives the, the elected officials the opportunity to act like they did something. And, you know, it will make it harder for people to get them. I guess, you know, there's already people that are having problems finding jewel pods and stuff like that just because of what jewel did um and you know this is another hurdle i guess that the the kids are gonna have to go through to get their you know illicit nicotine but you know my whole thing is this the so-called epidemic that you know D director gottlieb is using dog whistle politics here and basically focusing on you know children that are vaping as opposed to, you know, the opioid epidemic, which is a much greater problem because people are actually dying from that and by the thousands, as opposed to, um, you know, trying to take away a legal product that is the most disruptive technology in the, the health segment in probably a decade. So, you know, it just shows where the where the mindset is of the FDA and the federal government, they're most concerned about um, saving face and not necessarily to fix the actual problem. Um, they are, David, there are some uh, exclusions for military service members in these bills, but I just heard through the grapevine a little while ago that uh, in the state of Virginia, they are trying. They originally wrote that exclusion in, but there's some people that are trying to take that exclusion out. So, we'll see where they land on it once the governor uh, gets it to his desks, and and we'll probably sign it. Honestly, I don't see why he wouldn't, because he was for the bill. But uh, he may not be the governor for much longer, so who knows what the hell's going on? But that's just you know the latest update from what I've heard. Um, but good question, David. On a positive note, um, I don't know if some of you are aware or not, but they did um, publish some interesting uh, scientific information that's called a, from the New England Journal of Medicine. Randomized trial of e-cigarettes versus nicotine replacement therapy. And nicotine replacement therapy is basically all the drug companies' versions of what they think is better for us than vaping. Because that's the other thing that, that I heard the director of the FDA talk about, which just seemed completely bass backwards to me um, is that they're developing and fast pacing drugs in order to help the youth nicotine crisis because apparently that's a problem that we're I guess manufacturing so that the big pharma can sell drugs to fix it I don't know what that's really all about but um, anywho the the point that I am getting to is they did a study uh, New England Journal of Medicine published it like a week ago I want to say out of 886 participants of one year absence, there was a 18 percent. There was 18 percent in the e-cigarette group, as compared with 9.9 percent in the nicotine replacement group. Um, they were able to subs abstain from tobacco, traditional tobacco, for a year. Um, among the participants with one year absence, those in the e-cigarette group are more likely than those in the nicotine replacement group to use their assigned product at the 52 weeks. So basically they're saying that uh, more people that were vaping as opposed to the people that use the nicotine replacement therapy were still using that therapy or tool, whatever you want to call it, at the, the year mark, 80% um, versus 9%. Overall, uh, throat, and, throat and mouth irritation was reportedly more frequent in the e-cigarette group uh, 50 or 65 percent to 51 percent in the nicotine replacement group so that's basically a wash 15 percent is probably like two people um, and nausea more frequently in the nicotine replacement group uh, 37 to 31 um, so that's a, about the same kind of a wash um, the e-cigarette group reported greater declines in the instance of cough and phlegm production from the baseline to 52 weeks than the nicotine replacement group did. Um, 95% reduction in, uh, what are they talking about? Cough and phlegm. There's no significance between the group of induced wheezing or shortness of breath. 
um, and that's the results. So the conclusion, conclusion is that e-cigarettes are more effective for smoking cessation than nicotine replacement therapy when both products were accompanied by behavioral support. Um, so essentially the conclusions of the study were that uh, 18% versus 9.9% of the whole group of people were able to completely stay off tobacco products. So that's basically double. 9.9, .9, we'll give them some love and call them 10. 10% 10 versus 18%. That's almost twice as many people out of that 886 uh, participant group. So um, I would call that a big win, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Um, they've been saying for years that you know it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And now we have proof from a very reputable source that was conducted in the United States over a year long-term study. Um, so I would call that pretty conclusive evidence. Um, if they want, you know, to help the greater good in the public health, I believe um, my buddy Mr. Mike Larson out there at NOMS was posting some stuff the other day. It was like every, what is it, 90 seconds somebody dies from smoking-related disease? 90 seconds. He had a post where it talked about set your alarm for 90 seconds. And then every 90 seconds after that, set it. So every 90 seconds, you have an alarm going off. I couldn't do it for more than an hour. And I was irritated probably halfway through that. But I wanted to try to see it through. Hey, Mad Max, what's going on, brother? Good to see you tuning in. Um, the, the fact that we're suppressing technology that's twice as effective as anything else on the market um, is ridiculous you know and that's essentially what what they're trying to do with these t21 bills they're making it harder for people to get it um, they're saying that because kids are getting into it and using it in high school when they're underage that we should completely ban the technology and take all the flavors away and that's you know, that's like fishing with a shotgun. It's not the right approach whatsoever. And it's not going to cause anything but um, trouble and hopefully backlash from us in the vaping community. Because I know, I personally, I have, you know, two kids at home. I wouldn't want them to do either. But if it had to be one or the other, nine times out of ten, I'm going to say vaping is much, much less risky and much lower health impact than smoking. Obviously, comparing apples to apples, nothing is better. I would prefer that they didn't use any form of nicotine. But if they smoked some cigarettes with their friends and came to me and found out about it and saying they need, you know, once they turn 18, if they want to vape, I'm going to support that over smoking any day of the week. You know, let's not forget that the Royal College of Physicians, the same people that told us that cigarettes cause cancer 17 years before our own FDA and Surgeon General were like, oh yeah, that's probably true. They're the same people that said vaping is 95% safer than smoking. So let's not get it twisted. All these reports and you know findings and numbers and epidemics that the, the federal government and the FDA are coming up with don't really hold water. I am the first one to say that we definitely don't want kids using these products, but banning them across the board is not the answer. Um, we need to look at where the kids are getting them from. So I'm glad they sent those letters to Walgreens and Circle K because they're the biggest offenders. They're the ones that need to be punished, not adult consumers and people in the vape industry as a whole. So that's my little soapbox piece on what's been going on. Um, if there's any questions in that, I can always reference it back, um, but I want to move on to something on the positive note. Um, the VSFA, the Virginia Smoke Free Association, which we are huge fans of, um, spent the last couple of weeks down at the uh, Capitol talking to our elected officials, trying to educate them about vaping, what vaping is, and um, you know what we stand for as you know Virginia vape advocates, and offered up some really helpful stuff. Um, I think. There may be a education piece in the works that um, the VSFA may be able to host and educate um, some of the youth of the state of Virginia as to, you know, what what vaping is and why 
they should avoid it if they come across a friend that you know is juuling or vaping and their friend tells them you know want well, to check this out blah 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 we'll hopefully be able to provide them with accurate information which is the whole point of this show um in order to make the best decision possible and if they're of legal age and decide that it's something they want to do they'll be armed with all the facts about it instead of these you know stupid truth commercials with the puppets and all that nonsense um and all the misinformation they're getting on you know the mass media as a whole um so as part of that we actually got a bunch of new members the past two weeks so we want to give shout outs to them uh shinjin vapor they do um the the shinjin line they used to have those really cool like uh, pressurized pump bottles it's kind of like a hand lotion type situation um, they signed up so um, you may be seeing Shinjin vapors at RVA vape soon and um, our, if you haven't tried their stuff it's really good uh, I think the tortoise blood is the one I like the best so check them out as well as glass vapor out of California shout out to Sean glass um, really cool dude I met him in Miami a couple years ago um, you can get the glass basics line here at RVA vapes so Definitely uh, support those guys. If you haven't tried Glass Vapor, the sugar cookie is phenomenal. Oh, my God. It's so good. Um, the sugar cookie and their basics line is really good. And they've got some fruity flavors as well as the tobacco flavor in that line. Uh, the banana cream pie we've got here. Best banana I've had in a long, long time. So definitely check out Glass Vapor. Um, now, for those of you tuning in in other parts of the world or even the state of Virginia, uh, Dub C Vapor, WC Vapor, shout out to those guys. They got four stores, Salem, Forest, Christiansburg, and Roanoke. So if you're out towards the, the western tip of Virginia, definitely check out WC Vapors. Um, they, they were nice enough to support the VSFA this year, so huge love and respect to them. Um, we also got new guys, CJ Vapors in Stevens and Front Royal, Virginia. So if you're in either of those areas, Definitely stop by and check those guys out at least. For, thank them for supporting, you know, Vapor's Rights. And Dr. Fogsmith's in Monita, M-O-N-E-T-A, Virginia. I'm not going to lie, I don't know where that is. But if you're close to there or you do know where it is, make sure you check out Dr. Fogsmith's. Um, they were nice enough to join up with the VSFA as well. So definitely, if nothing else, stop by, try some of their juice they got there. Thank them. Thank them for supporting uh, the fight for Vapor's rights with their, you know, hard-earned money. We, we cannot be more appreciative of all the groups and companies that have joined up in our fight. Um, as always, shout out to my boy Fig, um, doing his thing out on the West Coast. Uh, Vape Tithing is a, a great organization that that we're lucky enough to be the the partners and beneficiaries of. So um, vape vape tithing and fig do a lot of good stuff for advocacy so if you ever come across uh gonzo's vapors or anything vape tithing um definitely check that out it's for a great cause and those guys do really good work um so that's um uh, all i've got for the advocacy portion of the show Let me get a vape here. If anybody wants to get any questions in, now's the time. Nope, nothing. Nathan, nada. Coolio. All right. Moving right along. Um, this week, we're going to do common misconceptions about pod mods um we get seems like as the supply of jewel pods in the united states gets less and less i have more and more people calling and coming in the store that are looking for jewel pods and one of the things that apparently not many of them are aware of is the the common misconception difference between um you know jewels and and pod systems so I found this really cool little graphic here um, to kind of help illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. Uh, that's not the one I'm looking for. Darn it. Okay, so we'll do this part first. 
So first and foremost, a jewel pod is roughly 0.7 millimeters, and it says approx or milliliters. I'm sorry, millimeters. Uh, they're roughly 0.7 milliliters, right? So people are always like, oh, they're so convenient. You just pop them in and go, and you're great. But then I talk to other people that are, um, you know, going through a pot or two a day, and I'm like, how is that really that convenient if it doesn't hold very much juice? So these are two of the more popular pods that I've got here. And these are from the Novo uh, pod system from Smoke Tech. And then this one's from one of my personal favorites, the Mi Pod right here. So both of these hold two milliliters of juice. So that means if you're going through two Jewel Pods a day, one of these will last you all day long. So that's convenience right there, you know. And I've even seen there's a couple of them now that are like three and a half and four mil pods um, that are huge as far as pod system capacity goes. Um, second one is going to be your uh, flavors, right? Your flavor options are absolutely limited with regards to Jewel. I think they have like eight flavors or something like that. And most places don't even stock all eight, let alone they pulled them off the shelf. So now you really can't even find but maybe one or two at each place you go to. Um, you know, there's two or three companies that we carry here at RVA Vapes. Soulless Vapor has close to 20 different flavors. Uh, Mr. Salty is another one. They have about 12 to 15 different flavors, I want to say. Um, so just with those two companies, you have quite four times the amount of flavors that Jewel puts out. So, you know, from a, a standpoint of selection and just finding something that, that's really going to do the trick for you, because that's one of my biggest proponents about vaping, is you really want to make sure you find a flavor that you really, really like. Because if you don't really, really like it, then the cigarettes become slightly more appealing. But if you really like it and enjoy it tremendously, that's positive reinforcement to help you, you know, reach for the vape instead of for you know your pack of cigarettes and I think that's a huge component personally uh, when it comes to making the transition from uh, traditional tobacco to vaping or any other type of tobacco harm reduction um, third performance I mean I'm sure you guys have seen somebody somewhere hitting a jewel pod or you know blowing out wispy little clouds and you know i'll be the first one to admit big vapor production like you see from like a box mod or something like this it's not for everybody you know it can definitely be um obnoxious in the wrong setting i totally agree with that sometimes i'll be out somewhere and see somebody blowing like big clouds of vapor like standing in line or you know walking through an outdoor mall or something i totally get that that could be obnoxious um but even from a apples to apples comparison this is my me pod right here see that amount of vapor been a minute since I hit that guy mm. salt Nick buzz oh <coughs> that wasn't salt that was a 12 of menthol oh. thanks Noel appreciate that um, so the performance just as far as not necessarily vape production, but we all know the more vapor, the more flavor, the more you're going to taste it. So if I want to taste my vape a little bit better, that's not obnoxious in my opinion, um, but it's twice as flavor, twice as potent flavor wise. And that's what really, you know, that's always been my biggest thing is flavor. If it tastes good, I'm going to enjoy it more. And the Jewel to me just doesn't taste good. Their flavors are a little whack. And the vapor production you get out of it on top of that is even weaker. You know, and the Mi Pod used to be the end all be all performance wise of flavor and vapor. The next generation of pod systems that's come out, like the Novos here, or even the, um, the Orions, it's just that much more flavor that you're getting out of them. So performance is just exponentially getting bitter better sorry um you know every 
90 days or so it's just leapfrogging itself to better performance and better flavor um the the biggest difference that you're going to find is the coil systems themselves right so the jewel uses around a 1.6 ohm coil with a silica wick now the reason i bring that up is because unless you've been vaping for four plus years you probably have no idea what a silica wick is and the reason that I bring it up is because silica wicking is technology that we haven't used in the last like three or four years. It's really, really old technology. And that's part of the reason the flavor on them is kind of whack. Um, the other thing about that is the coil resistance, 1.6 ohms. Now, that's similar to the resistance we used to use when we used silica wicking. So they've basically just repackaged five-year-old technology and they're pushing it out there because it's dirt cheap for them to make right um and the improvement in technology from the vape community as far as companies that are still manufacturing this stuff and evolving the technology you're not going to see a silica wick because we know that the flavor on it is garbage what you're going to see now is what you see right here and this is you can see it a lot better on this one right here um Hang on, let me switch screens so I can make sure I'm doing this right. So you can see that. You see those big puffy pieces of cotton that are sticking out of that? Uh, focus. Come on, you can kind of see it there. There it goes. Bam. So you see those big white spots like right where my finger's touching at? That's the cotton. That's the actual wicking material that you're seeing right there. And that's the evolution. You know, you've got this cotton wicking material here. And that's what's allowing this much, much better flavor and vapor production. Because you've got a much cleaner, more pure, more porous, higher performing uh, wicking material. And that's, you know, that's where we are technology wise now. What the jewels got is... I mean, we don't even sell anything like it's hard to find that kind of technology. It's so old, you know, it's the vapor industry moves very quickly. It's a technology based industry, so it's very up tempo and always evolving. And, you know, to be able to find a similar type of product that would work on like a, a 510 thread, you would be hard pressed to find it except for somewhere like, you know, uh, fast tech or something like that that's really the only place you're going to be able to find these silica wicking coils anymore um, and the 1.6 ohm coil is another piece of it you know obviously with salt nicotine you want to use above 1 ohm but the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that um, resistance is exponential so if you're going from a point a 1.6 to like a 1.4 you're not just getting 0.2 lower you're getting uh, 0.2 hundredths lower. So you're getting 20% improvement instead of you know 2% improvement. And these guys now, the Novos are going down to 1.2, um, which is still higher than the threshold for a lot of your salt nicotine stuff. But um, you know that's a 40% increase, not a 0.4% increase. Um, and that's that's really where you're seeing the the evolution and the technology improvement is the simple fact that um you know the coils are getting a little bit lower resistance now that they figured out how to wick them better so you're not getting dry hits and burnt hits and stuff like that but you're getting a much cleaner flavor because of the cotton and the lower resistance combination with the airflow itself you know the airflow is the other big piece of it and you can see like on these Novos here, um, this channel is a lot wider and it's got two different airflow inlets that it brings in from the bottom there. It, I mean, look how big that hole is right there. If you put that up next to the, the breather hole of a jewel or something like that, it's like massive comparatively. And those are all three factors that, you know, come into the, the flavor and the vapor production. In this case, the the flavor I think is much more important than the vapor production but when you break it down with any type of vape device those three things are always going to play a part you know how fast it wicks how fast the juice can get from the you know free floating form of the tank into the wicking material into the coil then you've got the resistance of the coil the lower it is the faster it heats up and then you've got 
the airflow. It doesn't matter if, the, if not all three of them are working together, then something's not going to perform right. And that's essentially what we're seeing here is the evolution that they've figured out how to dial it in so that you're still getting um, a mouth to lung type experience with a lower output of vapor, but maximizing the flavor side of it so that you can really taste and enjoy these you know, juices that we're paying for. Um, so the last part of this is the part that baffles me the most. You know, this is the part where we're talking dollars and cents, right? So apples to apples, what we're looking at here is, you know, on the left, you've got a jewel and on the right, you've got, um, you know, your average pod system, refillable pod system. And this is what we're talking about with me pods and Novos and, um, the Orions are a little bit of a outlier because they do cost 60 bucks um but they have a dna chip in them so they have some added features um but the rest of this stuff aside from that initial investment point is the same for any of these pod systems you know you're talking 50 bucks maybe 40 if you get a good deal somewhere um for the jewel and then a four pack of pods is like 15 16 bucks i think on their website and then you know your average pod mod system's about 30 bucks and then you buy a bottle of salt nick juice that's about 20 bucks okay so your initial investment right off the bat is cheaper. Then you scroll down and you say, okay, let's look at on a per day average, you know, one pot a day, that 0.7 milliliters uh, is five bucks. The same seven milliliters through that refillable pod that you've got is 47 cents, 47 cents. Now, this is where it gets even better though. Check this out. All right, so the yellow is per week, right? And you've got, um, you know, let's say you go through one pot a day for seven days, it's 35 bucks. You got four new pods that you gotta throw away, plus you gotta buy a whole nother pack of pods, right? Now, if you look over here on the refillable side, 0.7 milliliters a day, that's basically one pod fill a day, $3.26 because you don't have to keep buying the same pods. You can fill it up again. Most of these pods are good for five to 10 fills. So you maybe have to break it in a second pod, maybe, depending on your juice. If it's really caustic, you definitely have to break into a second pod. But if it's not, if it's something like I was just vaping that uh, strawberry kiwi lemonade from Solus, I don't have to change, I, don't, I can reuse the same pod like seven or eight times. So that's one pod and what, a quarter of a bottle of juice? And I've still got three quarters of the bottle of juice left over. This is the best part. This is what gets me the best. Over a month, one pot a day, 150 bucks. I don't know about you, but I was spending about that much on cigarettes. You get a carton for like 50 bucks, you know, two cartons a month, three cartons some months. You're getting up there. $28. For the entire month's worth of juice that's one bottle of juice and one pack of pods and you're good for a month this was the original argument is that vaping is cheaper than smoking jewel doesn't want you to know that because they make their money off the pods not off the devices right so let's say just for the sake of argument i'm going through 1.4 1.5 milliliters of juice a day Let's say I double that. You still have $120 in savings at the end of a month with double the usage. So all you guys out there that are got friends that are jeweling or buying jewels, if they're using a pod a day, you tell them to go to a vape shop and they could save $136 a month. Let's say they're using two pods a day. That $150 figure is going to be doubled. Plus, they could still save $122 a month. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't, ladies and gentlemen. I never sat down and actually did the math till uh, today because I really wanted to uh, get this piece out there to show everybody that, you know, we support anybody that wants to vape. But we also support what's good for your pocketbook. We may be the only shop in town that'll tell you you need a new coil instead of selling you a whole nother tank, but that's fine. We'd much rather sell you the right thing than sell you something that you don't need. And this is a perfect example of that. Um, so make sure you let 
anybody that you know that's complaining about how hard the pods are to find or how expensive the pods are, there's a cheaper way. And I'm going to throw that graphic up, I think, on our Facebook page. So uh, if you need to reference it for uh, any reason whatsoever, it'll be there for you. Um, any questions about pod systems versus pre-filled cartridges? Um, to answer your question, David, yes and no. Um, there's a couple of newer pod systems like the Orion or the uh, Nord kit from Smoke that use sub-ohm coils, which is going to give you the same type of vapor production. Um, the biggest issue is the battery life because um, the reason that a lot of these pod systems are so popular is because with that higher resistance 1 ohm, 1.2, 1.4 ohm coil, you don't need a very big battery to make it last all day. But that's also why the nicotine concentration is higher because you're not getting as much actual vapor so you need more punch per hit um, and that's kind of the trade-off that you use if your lower output type of system probably needs more nicotine concentration to give you the same effect you're looking for right um, so they've come out with these sub ohm pod systems like the the lost vape orion and they now have the orion q which is the cheaper non-dna version so if you like the orion but you don't want to pay the 60 bucks there's like a 40 or 50 dollar version um, that comes with some pods and stuff like that um, or the the smoke nord is another good option again though you're talking about a thousand milliamp hour lifespan um, which is basically at a 0.5 you're looking at about six hours of usage time which is the the average coil resistance the orions even have a 0.25 and i think you're looking at probably four hours if you're lucky. Realistically, probably closer to three before you have to charge that bad boy again. Um, so that's kind of the trade-off, is that the reason that these box mods have gotten so much bigger with the dual batteries and such is because we keep going lower and lower resistance on the coils, right? Um, but the Nord runs a 0.6 coil with a 1,000 milliamp hour battery, and I think the longest that I've heard is about six hours of usage time with it um, so I mean if you want it for to carry to work and you work in like office settings and you don't have time to use it all day that's definitely a good option because you could probably get a full day out of it if you're taking you know lunch break bathroom breaks maybe a smoke break or two throughout your shift um, you know I could see that lasting a, a work day but um, you're probably going to have to charge it on the way to work and when you leave, plug it in when you're driving home type situation. Um, but the Nord's definitely a good recommendation. I'm a huge fan of the Orion personally just because the flavor that that thing puts out is tremendous. Um, but an Orion with a 0.5, some people have still needed to bump up to like a 6 from a 3 because it's not quite as potent as like a lot of the newer mesh type tanks are. Um, and like your Cascade, I think, David... Um, but if you just bump up to a six and run it with like a 0.5 on the Orion, it's super small and compact. It puts out really good flavor and you're still going to get fairly good vapor production out of it. So hopefully that answers your question, David. Um, now ladies and germs, we've got a little bit of show and tell going on. So, what I have in my hand here is the very new Twister Kit from the good people at Freemax. And this is the first pin style mod that comes with a variable voltage wheel on the bottom. So, it goes all the way from 5 to 80 watts. And yes, it does have a high drain, uh, 2300 milliamp hour battery in it, so it can push all 80 watts. And it also comes with the first version of the brand new Fireluke Mesh V2. So, a couple of things. Um, as you can see, the airflow is slightly updated. I've got the V1 sitting on here. 
So you can see the airflow on this one is a little bit shorter and wider. Um, other than that, aesthetically, it's pretty much the same size, maybe you know an eighth of an inch taller. Um, it comes with the nice big juicy bubble glass on there, but it's not the fishbowl bubble. It's the you know non completely rounded, I guess you want to call it bubble. I don't really know. They did add the slide top feature, which you know we are huge fans of here at RVA Vapes. Um, but I think the coolest thing that they've got going on with this guy is the coils. They redesigned the coils. Now, if you look, there you go. You see that little wicking hole right there? See how that's completely cut out? And you have that little strip across the bottom, but then it goes right down in to that cavity on the bottom of the dual coil section, right? So this bad boy has completely redesigned coils in it. You know, we love these coils already, um, but they took them and made them even better. So let's check this out. They switched it up. Um, so it's got a porous wood pulp cotton formula. Basically what that means is they took the wood pulp flex technology that um, Horizon Tech Falcon tanks are kind of known for and mixed it with their cotton that they've been known for and incorporated that into the uh, the new tank. And what that's gonna do is extend, expand, I can't even talk right now, extend the average lifespan, but right here you can see two to three weeks. So you're getting higher performance with almost the same amount of um, lifespan. And that's unheard of. Usually it's a trade-off. You know, you get like the Fire Luke Mesh Pro tank, you were getting three to four weeks on a coil, but it wasn't really that great over like 50 or 60 watts. So you're getting good flavor, but you're not getting a ton of vapor production. Um, with the Mesh Pro tank from Freemax, you're getting great vapor production, but the trade-off is that you've got a little bit lower um, lifespan on it, like maybe a week, two weeks, if you really got a good juice in there that's not too bad on them. The other thing you'll notice is they've got this new mesh material structure and it's not really new because this is what was in the mesh pro tank that they came out with but they're touting this as the next generation and I've seen a couple other companies like Smoke Tech jump on this design right here. It says mesh material structure specifically for the Fire Luke 2. Mesh coil is cut precisely, canthal mesh plate. Uh, with a honeycomb design, enable a mesh coil to heat up evenly and instantly. Meanwhile, the coil fits into the wood pulp cotton so closely that there's no other type of coil could do so. As the mesh coil is so flat and smooth, the heat will be instant and evenly conducted into the cotton. Basically, I think they redesigned this for the wicking purposes. It gives you a little bit less surface area, so it allows the cotton and the pulp and everything to keep up with the amount of heat these coils are producing now. Um, flavor wise it's still going to be tremendous um, I've got one of those in my tank right now and I notice nothing but good things you know if anything it's maybe a little bit less airflow with the dual setup and a little bit more flavor which I didn't think was possible out of a, a fire Luke mesh tank but they figured out a way to do it and then here is their 360 uh, liquid technology or wicking technology that we were talking about you know, you've got those cutouts right there. They've got horizontal wicking channels on the actual coil, whether it's the dual or the triple coil right here. Um, and that just leads to faster wicking. And that's the name of the game. Um, you know, it, this can potentially cause leaking issues, but I haven't had any so far with mine. And here's the game changer, boys and girls. So, the X1, it's the same single coil 0.15 mesh that they've got, but look at the wattage range. It goes from 40 to 90 now, instead of 50 to 80. So, with that new cotton that they've got going on, the wood pulp mixture with the, the regular cotton, and the new mesh design, 
you're able to get an extra 10 watts out of this stuff which leads me to believe these are going to run a little bit higher and still last a little bit longer then they've got this x2 version which is a 0.2 resistance that i think is the reason that they've got this new design technology because they couldn't get a dual coil and still keep the resistance high enough to make it safe and usable for your average vapor on a daily basis so that's where you really see this new design of mesh coil come out and show its stuff uh, 0.2 40 to 80 watts um, but you notice how much smaller the air chamber is right you've got the big single coil air airflow and then the dual coil it's got almost the same airflow which out of that small of a coil is really tremendous and then of course you've got the triple version which has got even smaller coils in it um, but they're able to pack them in there some sort of way and that's going to give you a ton of flavor out of it so you see here the x1 stainless steel mesh coil same 0.12 resistance just with that upgraded style of mesh and your upgraded wicking material 90 percent wood pulp flax and 10 percent cotton the x1 is the same thing just the non stainless steel temp version then you've got your x2 and your x3 like we just talked about and i have to say that just in the you know couple of days i've been trying this new flax paper version out i really like it um i don't know what the longevity is going to be honestly but i did notice the break-in time was significantly less i know with the original ones i would have to break it in for probably a half a tank before i could turn up the wattage to what i normally vape it at and then that cottony taste would kind of come back a slight bit but when i first filled it up i always got that cottony taste for about a half a tank um, I didn't get that in the the X the new X1 single version coil. Um, it was almost instantly broken in, so that's a huge plus. Um, how long it lasts, we shall see. But um, I'm going to post an update video on the uh, the coils once we get the tanks uh, separately from these uh, twister kits in stock. Um, So that's the, the brief rundown for this um, Freemax Twister kit. We've got them in stock, and they're selling like hotcakes. So make sure you check out shop.rva vapes if you're not local and you want to grab one. Or if you are local, come on down. I think we got one or two left of each color. Um, and we got more coming, I think, next week. So there will be plenty of these to go around for everyone. But great buy, great battery design with a great tank. You don't see that very often. This one checks all the boxes. Now, we got another surprise that we got for you guys here. And this one is some new juice we want to talk about, right? So, uh, a lot of you guys are familiar with Dripmore. And they were part of that original blacklist, if you will. Um, and a lot of people condemned them for their uh, childlike marketing packaging whatever you want to call it and i was one of those people i'm not gonna lie when they first came out with those uh flavors and the packaging and the way it was i was not a fan um but as you can see um they have gone great lengths in order to improve that image and packaging so that um they are not part of the problem they are part of the solution you can see right here this is all the packaging for the various flavors none of it has cartoons on it this was the original one they were catching a lot of heat for that had like the sour patch kids looking packaging completely redesigned um, this is part of the new line that they just came out with that we want to touch on and then this is their line they came out with it towards the end of the year last year and it originally had cartoons and stuff on it they fixed that right away um, and then this one as well, no cartoons on it anymore, completely changed and redesigned. So that a lot of people, you know, initially when we first started carrying it, gave us some crap about it, um, because we did have a couple of bottles of the old style packaging, but here's the thing, guys, I'm willing to support anybody that's moving in the right direction. You know, they came out 
and expressed the concerns that people had, especially in certain states and cities where they were holding up their particular brand of packaging and using it to um, say that, you know, vape industry is promoting towards kids. And they came out and they took a stance and they said, we're going to fix it. They worked hand in hand with the FDA to redesign all their packaging so that it was compliant. And they also donated a bunch of money to vape advocacy. So we all have a past. I myself have a past that I prefer not to discuss. But at the end of the day, these guys are moving in a positive direction. So I want to support that. And you know we support anybody that's active in advocacy. So this group has stepped up and they donated a bunch of money to the VTA last year. And I'm talking with them right now to try to get on board with the VSFA here locally as well and help us fight on a state level. So that's part of the reason we decided to bring these back in. Um, the other part of the reason is they've got some really killer flavors. You know, you can see the descriptions we've got here. Batch is probably their most well-known flavor. And they say that it is, um, you know, blend of candy, of chewy, cherry, sour citrus, and sweet uh, gummy, I guess is what you would want to call it. Um, but that one in particular, people were asking for. So if you guys ask for it, we'll bring it back. We don't have a problem with that. Um, that one's probably their top seller. Now, the Berry Breeze is part of that other line that we were talking about that just launched called Tropic King. And that line is uh, like four tropical flavors. Out of all the ones we tried, this is the one that definitely stood out the most. And it's a blend of tart raspberry, tangy strawberry, sweet blueberries, and juicy black corals. Now, for a lot of us in the United States, we're not as familiar with corals as they are in Europe and some other places. Um, but I got the lowdown straight from uh, one of my good friends at um, The Last Machine, the, the flavor artist known as Birdman. And he explained to me that black currant is part of the grape family, but they use it a lot as glazes overseas in like Europe and the UK and stuff. So it's kind of got a grape thing going on, but not the same grape that we know. Um, but the reason it's not as popular is because it's sweet and tangy at the same time, or sweet and tart, I guess is a better way to put it. And Americans don't have a huge amount of um, liking for tart flavors. But over in the UK, where they drink lots of tea, they eat lots of tarts and raspberry things and sort of stuff like that, where lemon pastries that have that tart bite to them, um, that's why it's more popular there. But they use it in this particular flavor very well. It balances out the sweet notes of the strawberry and the blueberry and kind of cuts through the tartness of the raspberry. Um, and overall, this is probably one of the best berry mixed flavors I've ever had. So if you like berry stuff, definitely check that one out. Um, the Dunk or DVNK we've had for uh over a year i think at this point and it's just a really good frosted graham cracker cookie <coughs> excuse me um if you like vanilla and you like sweeter frosting type stuff definitely check that one out the next one you see there on the list is the honey and that's part of that milk king line that we were talking about that used to have the cows on it now it's just got the silhouette um that one is probably one of the best simple honey cream flavors I've ever had. You know, it's not overly intricate or multifaceted, but it's really good, smooth, creamy milk and sweet, drippy honey. I don't know why there's an M there. That's a typo, um, but it's supposed to stay smooth, creamy milk and sweet, drippy honey. Um, and that's exactly what it tastes like. It's just a creamy honey flavor. So if you like creamy and you want to switch it up or if you like honey stuff and you haven't tried it, definitely recommend that. And the last one is a fan favorite. Um, the guys from Dripmore were nice enough to come by the shop and out of everything he said, the, the biggest demand they have is for this lemon drops flavor. It's a lemon candy treat with balanced tanginess and sweetness. So it's a little bit sour, definitely got some sweet edge to it. Um, but it's one of the best candy flavor, like lemon candies I've ever seen. Um, it definitely knocks it out of the park if you like citrus and candy stuff. Um, 
And those are all from our friends at Dripmore. So make sure you check those out next time you come by. They're all 100 ml bottles for 30 bucks, so it's a great value. Um, and they're all in stock now. They're selling like hotcakes though. So I think we've got another shipment coming in Wednesday. Um, so if anything besides the batch jumps out at you, I think we only have three or six. We don't have both of everything else. But tomorrow we should get everything in. So you can definitely check it out then. Or grab it on the website. You can do that too. Um, last thing I want to talk about is Kilo. So... Some of you guys may or may not have noticed we did a post with a new Kilo flavor. Um, it's coffee cream from their Moo series or now what they're calling their cream series. And that flavor is now in stock. It's one of the more simple coffee cream flavors that I've tried, but it's got a large uh, wide spectrum to it. So a lot of people that try it really like it. So if you want a coffee vape that's not too um, overbearing, on the coffee side with a little bit of like sweet cream finish to it i definitely recommend checking that out but we've also now got uh dewberry cream and keyberry yogurt in 100 mils as well so all the kilos switching over to 100 mils um so you're going to be able to get you know 40 mils more for an extra five bucks so we think that's a huge bonus for you guys and we definitely want to pick it up to help save you guys some money. So if you're a fan of Kilo, haven't bought some in a while or haven't had it before, definitely check it out. They're now 100 mils for 30 bucks. So that's a screaming deal. Um, other than that, I'm pretty much out of stuff to talk about. So we got a couple minutes left here. If anybody's got any questions about any of that stuff that I went over, I know I kind of ran through the juices a little bit, but um, I've got the twister kit here with me. I've got these cool flavors here with me. Um, and what you want to know? doesn't look like anybody's got any questions so maybe that means I did a good job I don't know um, but what we can do is if you decide you have questions after this um, you can always email us rvavapes at gmail.com we can get all your questions answered um, check out our website shop.rvavapes.com it's got all the goodies we talked about and much much more um, Other than that, I don't know what else to say, David. It's been an hour. I appreciate every one of you guys for tuning in. Um, please share it with a friend or somebody in your favorite vape group so that they can get all the latest and greatest information. Um, as always, if you want to smoke, that's your business. If you don't, You know where we're at. <laughs>